Hi, today I'm here to walk you through today's writing assignment. For this week, we are going to be writing beginnings of our September 11th historical fiction stories. Now, we've been working on these stories for a while, and most of our work has been in research for historical context or doing pre-writing activities. Now I'm going to show you how we can take those pre-writing activities and turn them into our next step of the writing process, a draft. So what do you need to do? Well, first you're going to go through the slides on this presentation and listen to the video. And today you'll be submitting and writing chapter one of your story. And on Friday, you'll write chapter two. Remember that we're going to have six chapters total, two for the beginning, two for the middle, and two for the end. So which part of the story is our beginning? Remember our trusty plot arc there? Our stories, <clears throat> the beginning will be two chapters. One will happen before the first plane hits the, the towers, and the second one will show what's going on with our characters when the plane hits that first tower. Okay, this is just a recapitulation of what our story arc is. We'll go over how we can use this. So we wanna use all of our tools to write the beginning. Remember that we pre-write and research for a reason. We don't just have to start staring at a blank paper, chewing on the end of our pencil going, what do I write first? The good news is you can thank your prior self because you've already done your story arc, work on historical context, work on creating characters, dialogue, and the heart of the story that is gonna help you write your beginning. So you've already created your story arc. I'm just reminding you that this is mine. And I wanna show you how I use my story arc to begin my beginning. So the beginning and problem begins are my first two chapters here. So I'm just going to copy that and create the beginning of what my first two chapters are. So here's what I've got from my story arc. I don't have to start from scratch. Brian has a big presentation in the South Tower. He's tired from preparing for work all week, and he sees the plane hit the North Tower. Okay. Now I'm going to go to my historical context information remembering exactly how those things timed out in the morning, and I'm gonna add some specific details to my chapter. Now I've added that he was preparing coffee at 8.30 in the morning. I made sure that this time was before the planes was gonna hit the towers so that it would make sense with the story. Next, I made sure that his presentation was scheduled for 9 a.m. So we know that the presentation isn't really going to happen but Brian doesn't know that yet. It's kind of a type of dramatic irony. Next, Brian sees the, sees the plane hit the North Tower at 8.46 a.m. I've corrected that so it has the exact time. That's one way I can use historical context. Remember last week, we worked on developing our characters. So here, I remembered Brian, I had a picture of him, and I thought about his internal and external characteristics. For right now, the one I wanna focus on is his intelligence. One of his qualities was that he was smart, and I wanna show that in each of my chapters. In the first chapter, I'm gonna add the idea that his presentation is for the highest level of shareholders. That, I think, is gonna make it sound more important. And I try to add some urgency. If he does well, he might be in line for a promotion to the vice president of sales position. I just came up with this as an idea so that we could see that Brian might be a leader, he might be someone highly powered, highly educated to have a position like this. In the next chapter, I think I'm going to use um, his sense of sound to figure out that he's an intelligent person. So I've changed my language a little bit. At first I thought he was gonna see the plane hit the North Tower, but then when I thought about it, he wouldn't actually be able to look out the window in his building and why would he be looking out the window if he doesn't know that that's what's gonna happen. So I wanna tell the story from inside it. I want Brian, us to see Brian understanding what's happening as he sees it, as it goes. I don't want to predict already what's gonna happen at the end of the story because we know what's going to happen since this is historical fiction. But what we're reading to find out is how this character deals with these circumstances. So I changed it from sight to hearing. So he's gonna hear the plane hit the tower. And then I thought, what would a smart person do? Maybe they would close their eyes and try to understand where the sound was coming from before he just mindlessly started running. Those were two ideas I had to show Brian's intelligence. Now, I'm remembering back that I actually created a whole scene with dialogue. So I'm remembering this scene, but I noticed that I had placed this scene to go where problem solving begins. So I'm not going to use this scene in my beginning. 
Now, if you wrote a dialogue scene that does belong in the beginning, this is a perfect time to use that. You don't have to recreate it. You already have it right there. Here's how I'm going to use the dialogue. I wanted to make connections about how Brian talks and thinks in this scene to how Brian talks and thinks in that last scene we talked about last week. So in that final scene, uh, not final scene, but that scene that happens towards the end, he was talking to the man he rescued about how he felt that they were brothers and there was a whole emphasis on family. So I had an idea that maybe the reason he really wants to get this promotion is because he needs money to support his parents who are elderly. Since he's an only child, he'll have to afford that on his own. So that was something I added to the story. This is no longer true about the real Brian Clark, but as an author, as a writer, I'm trying to add some ideas to make my characters more complex and make their problems more urgent. I've also decided to add dialogue, so he's gonna say, we need to evacuate in a very serious voice. We also talked about the heart of the story last week. Remember that the heart of the story is that universal lesson the main character is learning by solving the problem in his story. And I really want Brian to learn that life is richer with family, that it takes energy to build a family, but it's worth it. So when I thought about the theme, I wanted to make a bit of a contrast. I wanted to show how in the beginning he's focused mostly on work, but by the end of the story, he's focused mostly on family. So I was thinking about how can we show Brian in a position to kind of have those realizations. I added a little bit at the beginning in the first chapter. I want him to get a call from his dad, but ignore it because he's preparing for his presentation. I think that would be a nice little detail in there to connect to the theme of family. And then in the second chapter, I want to think of him as a thoughtful person. So maybe he thinks about how he might look in this whole crowd of people. So I've added those little parts. I want you to see that I've been putting the parts that I added in bold, and I've just been repeating what I had for the other characters, for, for the other chapters. You don't have to do this work in a slides presentation, but I want you to kind of go through this thinking. The idea is we've done so much pre-writing, we've done so many tools, and we don't need to forget those things as we begin to write our story. So before you start writing your chapter, look back at your story arc, at the historical context, at the work you've done on creating a character, at the scene you created with dialogue and at the heart of your story and see what elements of that you can pull in to chapter one and chapter two. Next, let's use the elements we know that belong in good beginnings. A good beginning always starts with a hook or a lead to grab the reader's attention. It establishes the setting, introduces the main character and begins the problem in the story. So what do you need to do? You've got to look through these slides. The next slides have your mentor texts. Today, you're going to write chapter one, and on Friday, you'll write chapter two of your September 11th historical fiction story. Keep watching to hear the first two chapters of the story I've been writing. Chapter one, gurgle, gurgle, drip, drip, sounded the coffee machine as it filled Brian's third dark roast brew this morning. Brian took a deep breath in as the smell of warm coffee filled his nose and made him shake his head awake. Brian looked at his watch. 8.30, good, he mumbled to himself. 30 minutes left to prepare my presentation. Brian knew this would be a big day. He had been working on his presentation to the highest level shareholders for the trade corporation for the past several weeks. He had graphs, charts, pictures, and many facts to share. At the last meeting, his boss, Carmen, told him, if this goes well for you, there's a vice president of sales position with your name on it. A promotion like that would mean the world to Brian. He thought about his name on the door of an office, sitting at the head of the table in meetings, and finally having enough money to save for his mother's assisted living. Brian was an only child, so it was his responsibility to take care of his parents on his own. Buzz, his phone vibrated. The screen read, Dad. Brian slid his finger to silence it. He would call him back later. The cup of coffee was finally full. Brian took it with him to the South Tower men's room. He wanted to freshen up before the meeting. This is my chapter two. 
Boop, boop, boop. Brian punched in the code and swung open the door to the men's bathroom. He placed his warm cup of coffee down with his left hand and opened the cool water faucet with his right hand. He closed his eyes and used both hands to splash his face with water. There were only 15 minutes left before his presentation was to begin. At this point, he just wanted to calm his nerves. He breathed in a deep breath when suddenly he heard a loud crash. Brian didn't know it yet, but in one minute, his whole day changed. He closed his eyes for a moment and tried to understand where the sound was coming from. He took off from the bathroom, leaving his steaming coffee behind as he shouted to the stalls, We need to evacuate! Now! He took off running as he heard the announcement to the whole building. The North Tower had been hit by a plane. What? His mind began to race, but Brian controlled it and brought it into focus. He had to get out. That was the only thing he could focus on. As Brian, alert, bobbed and weaved through the tight crowd of people towards the stairs, he noticed that most people were heading downstairs B and C. The elevators were inoperable during an emergency. A voice inside him told him to take stair A. Brian walked briskly to the stair A door. He imagined how he must have looked like a tiny little ant among a colony marching in line, communicating without saying anything at all. So this last slide gives you a reminder of what goes in the beginning, what goes in the middle, what goes in the end. This week, we are only focused on beginnings. You're gonna be writing chapter one and chapter two of your historical fiction story. Focus on your main character, introduce us, introduce us to the setting, show us where the problem begins, and try to entertain us. Remember that any good narrative fiction writing has a balance of action, talk, dialogue, and feelings when we're showing what the characters are up to in our stories. Thanks, and I'll see you next week.